Hey there Dev Squad, Virtus here and welcome back to my Unreal Engine 4 Endless Runner tutorial series. In today's video we're going to be showing you how you can set up a simple main menu for your Endless Runner game. Now the way we're going to be doing this is by taking some graphics that I've made already inside of Photoshop, importing them, importing them into the engine and using that to create a UI widget with the functionality to start your game and to exit your game as well and all of this is going to work on mobile. Now as usual with this being a new episode you are going to need to have the latest version of the endless assets. Now within here I have got a menu folder and within this menu folder I have got a couple of things. First and foremost I have got the background image for the menu and then I've also got the start and the exit button. Now if you guys want to add some extra buttons you can do this by downloading um, the resources, you've got the Photoshop document within there, you can check out the resources from my UI series, it's entirely up to you, there's loads that you can do, but for now we're just going to be having the two buttons and the background. So what you're going to want to do is within your Unreal Engine 4, within the content browser, go to your UI folder and then within here add a new folder and give this the name main, main menu open this up and what we're going to do is import these four buttons and the background image in there. Just drag and drop to place that in just as it is. Once you've done this what we can do is start forming the widget blueprint which is actually going to contain the main menu. Now what we're going to do is add the widget blueprint so right click add a widget blueprint under user interface and give us the name main menu. Once you've done that Go ahead and double click on this to open it up and we can start adding in those elements. Now in terms of the elements that we're actually going to need it's pretty straightforward. We are going to need two button components and then an image component for the background and with that button we're just going to be adding a little bit of code to form the functionality to start that. So within here first and foremost let's add in the more prominent piece which is going to be right at the very back which is going to be our image for the background. Now as you can see here I've got this pre-made image what I'm going to do is go ahead and go to my right hand side in the details panel with this new image I've just created from my palette go to appearance brush and set this image to background and then what I can do with this I can either scale it to the whole width of the scene but what I advise that you do is instead you anchor it to the whole size of the screen that way it is going to fit all the way out to the edge of the screen no matter what the content is. Now with this what we have got is offset left, top, right and bottom. Now what we're going to do is while the anchor point is in the middle we're going to set the size of the X to 1920 size of the Y to 1080 so it's the full size of this widget that we've got and then if we set it to the anchor to the top left we can make sure this is in perfectly so 0 and 0 and then once you've done that that's when you want to anchor it to the whole size of the screen so that way you know your offset is perfectly fine if it looks a little bit off here and it says a different value just make sure it's all zeroed out but you want this to be perfectly centered and at the right size as well. So we've got our background image here and what we need to do now is add in a couple of buttons. One button and another button. Now with the first button in the details panel in the top right hand corner I'm going to give this a name start btn so we know this is a start button and you can see the name has now changed on the left hand side. Now what we need to do to make sure that things don't get too confusing with the buttons when you're clicking and dragging around is you want to make sure your Z order is set up correctly so that the buttons are always rendered on top. So with the first button selected set your Z order to 1 and then do the same thing with the second button and no matter if you drag around your background the buttons are always going to be on top still. So with the start button go to appearance in the details panel under normal and what you want to set this to is start button. Set your margin to zero 
and then your image size, you can see here it says 385 by 91. That's what you should be setting it up at the top. So it's exactly how I've exported it out of Photoshop. So 385 by 91, and you can see I'm just doing this in the top right hand corner within my details panel. What we're gonna do next is close up the normal tab, go to hovered, and we are gonna be using the start button again, but it's a start button pressed image, and set your margin to zero. And once you've done that, you're all good. And lastly, for your pressed, if you want to, you can either use the normal button or you can use the pressed button. It's entirely up to you. So for now, I'm just gonna use the press button because on mobile, you're not gonna see the hovered effects because you tap, you don't hover. So that's all good, that's all set up. All I'm gonna do now is just add the appearance for the exit button as well. So this time, we are looking for the exit button for the normal. Margin, once again, that should be zero. Size X and Y, 385 by 91. And then go to your hovered, and this time it's gonna be exit button pressed, margin to zero. And then lastly, just go ahead and do the same thing with the pressed and set this to exit button pressed, margin down to zero, and we've now got our two buttons. Now with these two buttons, what I'm gonna do is anchor these to the center of the screen so they always stay centered just the way that I want them to. Now we've got our two buttons in here, but they're not really gonna do anything when you click them. So what we need to do is add a little bit of functionality. Now the start button, what we're gonna be doing with this is telling it to open up the level for the runner level. And the way we're gonna do this is go all the way down to the bottom of the details panel, create an on-clicked event, and with this, what we're gonna be doing is telling it to load level. Or if that's, okay, it's not there, so it should be open level. And then what we're gonna be doing in here is putting in the level name for our runner level that we set up previously. Not the third person example map, we are talking about the level that you've created. For me, I named that runner level without any spaces. So what I'm gonna do is open that up and just get that name and just type it in here. So that is gonna be runner level just like that. And that's literally all we need to start the game. If you open up that level and then if you press play, it is gonna go straight in here. Now. Bear in mind we've got some issues where we've got no space for them to spawn, but that's gonna be something we'll fix later on in the series, just before we show you how to package it up. But for now, that is the start button working. Next up, we're gonna do the exit game button, and that's really straightforward as well. Once again, in the details panel in the bottom right hand side, you wanna create another on-clicked event. With this, what we can do is run a console command and the console command for this is simply exit i believe i'm just going to check that i'm going to go into my game and if i press exit it's going to exit the game close it whether that's viewport or a standalone so if you just have the console command exit in there it is going to close your game so now we have a working start and exit button for our main menu However, what we need to do now is get that to be the first level that is opened up and displayed on the screen separate from the main menu, uh, separate from the runner level. So create a new level. We're just going to give this the type empty level. We don't need anything in there. We want this to load as quick as possible. Now with this, you want to open up a level blueprint. With this level blueprint, on begin play, we're gonna tell this to create a widget. The widget class for this is gonna be the main menu, and then we are simply going to add this to the viewport. So now, if you press play in here, what you should get is the main menu. And at the moment, it's not doing that, is because we are 
trying to spawn in the obstacles using all of the normal game mode stuff. So what we've got to do is go into the world settings within this new level we've created. You can do this by going to window, world settings, and then go to game mode, set your game mode override to third person game mode. Default pawn class should be none. HUD class should be none. Player controller, I think we can leave it where it is and the rest of the stuff should also be left where it is. Press play now and what you can see is we have got our main menu being displayed on the screen. If I press exit, it's going to exit the game, it's going to close the viewport. If I press play and then press start, it is going to pause for a second and then from there it is going to proceed to open up the runner level. Now bear in mind with this runner level we've got a couple of issues where it's not spawning in at the right place, but that is a really easy fix. But for now, what you can see is that you have your main menu fully functional. What we're going to do is show you how to make this be the default level that is loaded when you start your game. So first and foremost, you want to go to file and save current, and we're going to give this the name main menu level so that we can actually work with this and we don't have to do it again. Once you've done that, go to edit and project settings. And then from there, give it a little moment to load up. And then if we go to our maps and modes, we can set our game default map to our main menu level. And what this is going to do is once you package your game, it is going to tell it to open up that main menu level as opposed to anything else. So now, if we was to play this as a standalone game outside of the editor interface, it's going to open up that main menu level and then from that main menu level, we can tell it to go and do its bits. Now, what we do need to do is add in a reference to the main menu from the game over screen. Because if you open this widget blueprint up, you can see we've got a, main, a menu button. And the way this is going to work, as you imagined, is we're going to go to the details with that button selected and create an on-clicked event. With this, we're going to tell it to open a level and we're going to tell it to open the main menu level exactly as we have typed it and that is going to work. And then if you have any other screens that have buttons for the main menu, such as the pause screen, if you have got one, you can add it in there as well. So leave the leave button, we can open this up and we can also tell this to open the level and the level name exactly as it's spelled should be main menu level, just like that. And now, all of our links to the main menu level should be exactly as they are. Save everything you've got and open up your runner level. Now within this, what I wanted to do is to show you how to fix this bug where you're spawning underneath the ground. Reason for that is simply your third person game mode needs to be your override or we can even create a new one. So create a new blueprint. We're just going to give this the name. Uh, actually, let's not do that. What we're going to do, default pawn class is going to be our third person character. HUD class is going to be normal. Press play and it will play as it should do. Go ahead and then hit save current on that. On our main menu level, go ahead and save that. Going back in here, you can see it is using the third person game mode override. What we're going to do is make a new one so that we can differentiate the gameplay from the main menu. So over here under game mode, game mode override for this main menu level, create a new blueprint and call this main menu mode and then just press OK. With this, just set your default pawn class and your HUD class to none and then just go ahead and save it. Press play, press start, and when it loads in, 
it is going to load you into the game as it should. It is going to play 100% correctly. Now, what I can also do, just for testing purposes, is go back to that menu by pressing the start button or the menu button from either the pause screen or the game over screen. Anyway guys, that is pretty much everything for the main menu. Like I said guys, if you want to add in your own graphics, you can go ahead and do that. You just need to design them yourself in Photoshop, or you can even use my UI series as reference to learn how to do a whole bunch of other cool stuff within your UI. But for now guys, that is everything. Once again, thanks for watching, stay awesome, keep creating. Your boy Virtus, signing out. This video was made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want more videos like this, check out my Patreon page using the link in the description. To stay up to date on new releases, make sure you follow us on social media.